again and welcome back to the Fat Fish Guitar Studio. I'm Dave and in this video I want to talk a bit about sort of what we get for our money when we buy a guitar and sort of where compromises sometimes have to be made in order to be able to hit a particular price point. And I've been playing guitar for a long time. I know what I like in a guitar. I know what makes a guitar good or bad or indifferent and I'm incredibly lucky. I count my blessings that I've got guitars like this hanging up on the wall that are wonderful instruments to play but I recognise that they're they're not cheap, they're certainly not what you would consider to be affordable. Guitars maybe like this, this Epiphone Wildcat which I had for a few years, I bought this as a guitar that was going to be a little bit of fun. It's definitely much more in the affordable range of things and when I play it I recognise like compromises that were made with this guitar where it had to meet, meet a price point that, to be honest, it was like a tenth of something like that custom shop Stratocaster. So if you're looking to buy a guitar, you're going to have to make some sort of judgment about how much you can afford or how much you can justify spending. And guitars, like many things in life, you get what you pay for. The more you pay, the better quality, the more features or whatever you're going to get for your money. However, you need to bear, bear in mind that the, the scale of what you pay versus what you get for your money isn't a nice straight, straight line. If you start right down the bargain basement, really, really affordable entry level guitars, and you compare the, the cost of those and the features versus something that costs, let's say you take a guitar that costs a hundred pounds, 150 pounds, something like that, versus a guitar that costs 100, uh, say, twice that, 200 to 300 pounds, something like that. There'll be a vast difference in quality. Double, double a difference in quality for double a difference in price? Maybe when you're way down the bottom end of the market, perhaps that sort of, that sort of scale's true. But if you look at higher price points, the difference between a, a, a 400 pound guitar and an 800 pound guitar, the line's not just continuing to go up, it kind of starts to, to peter off a little bit. And when you get into you know guitars that are like a thousand, two thousand, many thousands of pounds, the you, the the leap in quality and features for that you get for uh, the amount of money that you pay, it's it's less. The first thing to think about is build quality. You know how well put together is a guitar, how solid is it? Um, you know what type of wood to use? Is it is it reasonably good quality metal that's used for the hardware? good quality timber, that sort of thing. This is why I would always encourage you, if possible, go to the guitar store, actually try the guitar out, look at it, examine it, give it a physical examination and know how it feels. If you're not an experienced guitar player, take someone along, a friend who can play guitar, perhaps has more experience than you with guitars and knows some of the things to look at. Sometimes there'll be a just a, a, like one issue. It's really, really fundamental. You, as an inexperienced player, you might not spot it, but it'll compromise the quality of the guitar. Something about whether or not the neck is perfectly aligned with the body, or you know if the bridge is slightly off off alignment and the the strings don't line up on the neck. You might not instantly notice that, but a more experienced guitarist would. And if that that neck isn't set properly into the guitar, it's going to give you all sorts of problems playing it. So you would reject that guitar and look for something else. So as long as the guitar is you know, basically well put together, yeah, that's, that's a good thing. Then we need to think about other things about the, like the general fit and finish. It kind of falls under the, the, um, the heading of build quality, but certain areas here you can make compromises. Like the guitar, it, you, know, you want something that looks nice, but if it's not you know, cosmetically brilliant, it doesn't affect the playability, it doesn't affect the sound. If you're prepared to make some compromises in certain areas, then cosmetics is a really good area to be prepared to make compromise. You know, you get, you pay this much money, you get this many features. Something's, you know, something's got to give in, in terms of features to be able to pay less money. If you want to pay the same amount of money, then you get like less quality finish, but you know, better quality pickup, something like that. It's all a bit of a balancing act. So something like, you know, the, the finish is a bit iffy, that would reflect in the price, but it makes the guitar more affordable and it doesn't affect the playing, the, the, the playability. What affects the playability is things like the frets. Are the frets properly seated in the, in the fingerboard? Are they nicely finished at the edges? There's no sharp, sharp edges or sharp corners that are gonna dig into your hand when you're playing the guitar. Are they all level? 
Now, this was a problem I had with this particular guitar. You know, I was prepared to accept in terms of build quality, it was generally pretty good. Uh, had some good hardware. I'll talk about hardware in a second. Um, but for the price point that I got it at, there, there were going to be some compromises. And certainly, some of the fret work was a little bit iffy. Some of the frets were a little bit higher than others. I needed to take that to somebody and get him to, to do a bit of a fret dress at a fret level to get the frets right. It needed more work. It needed a little bit of money spending to get the most out of the guitar because I was paying a certain amount of money for something, they'd had to make compromises in the, uh, in the manufacturing process. But, you know, that's something to look at. Uh, uh, is, the, is the guitar properly fretted? Things like fret buzz, sometimes that can be sorted by a setup, and I'll talk about setups uh, in, uh, in a little bit. But fret work certainly is something you want to examine with your, uh, when you're looking at a guitar. And the voice of an electric guitar is the, the pickups. And again, cheaper guitars, the pickups won't be quite so good. The main area where you'll notice a difference in quality is the sound. You know, cheaper guitars will have a, a poorer quality sound, to be perfectly honest. Although I have seen cases, I mean, I did a video on my channel uh, years ago where I compared a fairly expensive American Fender Strat against a more affordable Mexican Fender Strat. To my ears, the more expensive guitar had a better sound, but quite a few people prefer the cheaper sound, the sound of the cheaper guitar. It's all it's all personal preference. But generally the sound on a you know really cheap guitar pickups that might be a little bit muddy, a little bit indistinct. And certainly they're unlikely to be like wax potted. So if you play really, really loud, they'll tend to pick up um so like sound from the room and cause feedback issues. But if you're just a beginner guitarist just playing at home, that's less of an issue. So uh, not necessarily something to worry about too much. You know, really the guitar's got to feel right. My personal opinion is the guitar's got to feel right for you as the primary thing and then sound right as a, as, as a secondary. Electronic components, again, you can have things like pickup selectors, volume controls, tone controls. Cheaper guitars, you might have fewer, fewer of those. You know, you might just have a single volume, single tone as opposed to more sophisticated pickup switching and different electronic options. Uh, the main area where manufacturers will save costs is by using cheap components. You know, the, the potentiometers behind the volume and tone pots, uh, they might not be as hard wearing. They, you know, if you use them a lot, they might get a bit loose. They might start to sound a bit scratchy. Um, certainly they're not gonna be as um, like watertight. So you know, if you buy a really good quality guitar, it's got good quality components on it. You don't need to worry about using the controls and you know, the, turning that volume control is not gonna wear it out a lot. If you're playing it on stage and you know, sweating into the, uh, the electrics, you're not gonna have to worry too much about sweat getting into the potentiometers so much as you would with cheaper ones. Again, everything's made to a price point. If you pay less, you will get cheaper quality components. But if you're just using it for bedroom use, you know, it's probably a compromise that you can afford to make. Other bits of hardware like the tuners, the bridge, bridge saddles, again, everything's made to a price point. As long as you can assure yourself that they fundamentally work, then you're probably okay. It's an area perhaps where you can be prepared to make a compromise. If you're buying an affordable guitar, it doesn't have to have Shala or Grover or Goto on the, on the tuners. As long as they work, you know, they don't even necessarily have to be locking. As long as they work and keep the guitar in tune, that's fine, that's what you want. It, locking tuners, higher ratio tuners, whatever, are better. But as long as they do the job, then that's good enough. And lastly, something like the nut. You know, this nut here is made out of plastic. It's not the best material for a nut. Personally, I prefer something like bone or graphite, but those are more expensive to make. So you won't find them on cheaper guitars. But a plastic nut does the job well enough. And to be honest, a well set up guitar can be a lot more forgiving. So let's talk a little bit about setup. You know, most guitars will come out of the factory and they go to a distributor and the distributor takes it, sends it to the shop and the shop then puts it on, on sale for you. If you're at the budget end of the, the market, that guitar won't have been set up in the factory. So by set up, what I mean is tuning, obviously, but things like neck relief, make sure that the neck's 
the, the neck's adequately straight, that the nut's been cut properly, that the slots are just the right size for the, the strings to go through without binding or sticking or giving you problems with tuning stability. You know, if, if you've got a floating tremolo, that that's been set up properly. You can save an awful lot of time by not doing a setup on a guitar in the factory, and that can then reflect in the price. Now, if you're buying it from a good shop, then the shop will do a little bit of a setup for you, hopefully. But they've still got to make their profit margin on the guitar. So there's only so much time that they can afford to spend doing a setup. So they might not be able to go through and do loads and loads of fine tuning and fettling on a guitar. So you might still find that even if the, the shop does its own setups, things might not be perfect. But it's still salvageable. Uh, you know, if you've got a, a nut that's been cut really, really badly, hopefully that will be addressed by the shop for you. You know, the intonation will have been set, things like that. But if not, it's it's all things that can be can be set for you by a guitar technician. You know, if the, if the guitar, going back to the first thing I said, if the guitar's got decent decent build quality, you know, the neck's set straight to the body, or, you know, the... The, it's made in such a way that you you can get a decent out action action out of it. Then a setup will a setup will save the day. And to be honest, a cheap guitar with a good setup is probably better. Certainly, it's, I'd rather have a cheap guitar with a good setup than an expensive guitar with a bad setup. Cheap guitar with a good setup is playable. You can do things with it. Uh, an expensive guitar with a bad setup. It, it's not as playable. Uh, so, to be honest, don't undervalue um, a setup. Now, I mentioned cost of manufacture just before there. And this is something. The manufacture of a guitar, you've got the, you know, the, the base materials and the hardware, the wood and all that sort of stuff. But a lot of the cost in a guitar is labour. You know, there's no such thing as like a guitar making machine that you can just throw a load of wood and some metal in and it spits a guitar out. A lot of the work that goes on a, on a guitar is manual. And if you take something like fretwork, for example, you know, a, a good guitar, um, you know, a good, a good luthier could spend a day doing the frets on the neck, you know, preparing the neck, putting the frets in, making sure they're properly seated, crowning, polishing, uh, making sure the edges are nicely finished allowing it to settle, going back, making sure it's all good. You know, it all takes time. In a factory, they might be spending 10 minutes, if that, fretting a neck and getting the frets all level ground and polished. It's not going to be as good quality. Time is money. And one of the, the knock-on effects of that is quality is often inconsistent. And this is a really good way that as a manufacturer, you can save money is by not being so stringent on your quality control. So that's something I'd always advise you to do if you're looking at the more affordable end of the market. You know, you're in a store, and there's a load of, a load of guitars. If there's one that catches your eye. If there's two or three of the same model, try, try all three because you might find one where the quality control was a bit lax, but it got through because they didn't have a particularly high quality control bar in the factory, then you might get another one that plays absolutely brilliantly because they just happened, they just fluked on getting some of the, the manufacturing spot on. So be prepared to try a few guitars and, and, and be mindful that quality will vary at, at between guitars at the more affordable end of uh, the more affordable end of the market. Now looking around the affordable guitar marketplace, I was having a conversation with somebody the other day and they pointed out some guitars that a particular manufacturer was doing, and they are really, really cheap. Uh, very, very attainable in terms of price. And it sort of set a bit of an alarm bell with me because I thought, is that too cheap? Because knowing the manufacturer, uh, well, they're, they're not gonna be selling guitars that are really, really shonky. They're gonna want stuff that's got a reasonable build quality. You know, They're not gonna be compromising in the really fundamental stuff. So how do they get the guitar that cheap? Either the parts have got to be rubbish, you know, like the you know, the bridge is gonna be made out of like really cheap pot metal or the tuning tuning keys aren't gonna work or something. But no, because they've got a reputation for selling decent instruments. So something's got to give. And my concern there is well, what's the ethical stance on the guitar? And I don't want to get all high and mighty about it, but it is something that I kind of think about is there's got to be a certain limit 
for when you take away the the retailer's profit and the distributor's profit and little profit margins and things along the way just how much it costs to make that guitar you know i know how much you know cheap pickups cost i know how much cheap machine heads cost factor all of that out the price then you're left with the cost of the the, the labor possibly the wood you know is the wood coming from an ethical source or is the factory treating its labor in a good in a good way and i'd start to worry um and i don't want to cast aspersions but you know Chinese factories, I certainly know anecdotal evidence I've heard from certainly from like the electronics trade, working conditions in factories aren't brilliant. And I start to worry if you can get a guitar that's really, really bargain basement prices, but it's not bad. What are the working conditions like for the, the workers? So I've kind of got a certain threshold below which I wouldn't want to go just because of ethical concerns. Okay, so nowadays, buying a, a, a guitar towards the more affordable end of the market, I don't think there's ever been a better time to do that. I remember when I first started playing, there were a lot of like not-so-good guitars in the affordable range. Nowadays, generally, guitars are pretty good, certainly compared to what they were a, a good many years ago. What you just need to bear in mind is that you're not going to get a truly, truly wonderful guitar. But if you're less experienced, to be honest, that doesn't really matter. As long as you get a guitar that you like, that's fundamentally good and you're, you're happy with, you like the way the neck feels, you, you like the, the vibe you get from it, then that's going to st stand you in good stead. So if you're less experienced, there's going to be certain features that a more high-end guitar would have that possibly would be completely lost on you. And if you're less experienced, something's having this, something that's a little bit more of a struggle to play is, is quite a good thing. I remember a student I had years ago, um, his parents really wanted, he wanted to play guitar and his parents wanted to, to support him and they bought him a really good quality guitar. They bought him a Gibson Les Paul Standard. You know, that was an awesome guitar. There's sometimes I was going along to do lessons and I just had a, a you know, a battered old SG or a Strat or something I was, I was using to teach him. You know, his, him as a novice student, he had a better guitar or a more expensive guitar than I had as the teacher. And that kind of gave us some problems because that was a really good guitar. It was beautifully set up, but it was incredibly easy to play. The action was really low. Now, having a good, a good guitar doesn't make you a better player, but it can kind of make things a little bit more comfortable. Things will just come, come to your, your fingers a little bit easier. And we kind of struggled a little bit because I mean, we did this one time, I kind of just gave him my guitar to play and it was like, oh, hang on, this feels a bit awkward. You know, the action was just a little bit too high for him and he couldn't, he couldn't play things. So, you know, starting on something that's not super, super easy to play, as a beginner, you don't know any different. And that's a, so really that, that aspect doesn't really, doesn't really matter so much. I'll give you a really good example, a more recent example. That bass guitar there. I uh, don't talk about that uh, in these videos because I'm not a bass guitarist. This is um, something uh, guitar, a bass that I got just for for home recording. I'm not a, I'm not a, an experienced bassist, so there's going to be like little nuances on a bass that are completely lost on me. That is a very cheap, very affordable bass, but it does the job. It's playable. The frets are are pretty good. The neck's pretty good. The sound on it is not too bad. I'll be honest, the electronics, the quality of the potentiometers is dire. They're the cheapest, nastiest pots you could ever you could ever imagine. The finish on it is really bad. There's a few scratches and dings, which I'm sure came from it just being thrown around in the factory because it was just, you know, it was just a commodity. It was being, you know, rushed through the factory as, as quickly as possible. But in terms of what I'm getting from it, it plays well and it sounds well. It does the job. It's great for me just doing home recording with. It wouldn't last up to, you know, going on the road. And that doesn't matter because I'm not taking it on the road as a bassist. There might be certain nuances in the electronics or the way that it plays as a bass that a more experienced bassist would have a problem with. But for me, it doesn't matter because I'm not that picky. If it was a guitar, there would be features, things on that that would start to to niggle me. But as a bass, it, does, it doesn't really matter. 
Something to mention just before we close is the idea of getting a cheaper guitar and upgrading components. Now it's a perfectly valid thing to do. I've done it myself on quite a few guitars. You know, things like strats are really good for this because there's just a series of component parts and you can swap out bridges and pickups and things relatively easily. But bear in mind, there's a natural limit to how much it's practical to upgrade. You know, having a guitar and think, oh, I don't quite like the sound, I'll replace the pickups, that's one thing. But buying a guitar, replacing the pickups, the electrics, the bridge, fitting a new nut, fitting new tuners, you know, the amount that you're sinking into that in parts, to be honest, you're probably better off just getting a, a, a guitar that's got all of those things on. And I'll mention this in connection with one last thing, and that's the vexed subject of fake guitars. Because people often buy, let's, let's say, Chipsons, you know, the idea of these fake Gibson guitars made in China uh, that are quite prevalent. And people say, well, I can just buy those. I couldn't possibly afford a real Gibson, but I'll buy, I'll buy a fake Gibson and then I can put some new pickups in and, and I'll have a, have a good quality guitar. Two reasons why you shouldn't do that. First of all, going back to the things I said at the start of the video, there will be some fundamental issues with that guitar where for the price point you're buying it at, you know, shipped to your door from China for a couple of hundred pounds or something, it will have fundamental build defects which make it unplayable as a guitar. It might look nice, but I guarantee the neck's not going to be aligned properly or the brake angle's going to be rubbish or there's going to be something that seriously compromises it as a playable guitar. So it's not a sound investment. You're not starting from, from, from strong foundations. And secondly, when you buy fake guitars, you know, whether it's a, a fake Gibson or a fake anything, you're cheapening the value of the brand. And to the entire guitar community, that's something that matters. Because you might say, oh, well, I, you know, I couldn't possibly afford a Gibson, but I'll, I'll, buy, a, I'll, I'll buy a fake Gibson and you know, it's not hurting anybody. Well, who it's hurting is the people who have real Gibsons because let's say I had a, a, real, a real Gibson Les Paul and I wanted to sell it. I try and put it on eBay or Gumtree or you know, your Craigslist or whatever your local, um, your local advertising medium of choice is. I could... I'm selling this as a genuine article, but people could look at it and say, well, how do I know it's the real thing? It might be a fake. And it makes it harder for me to sell. So there you go. That's me rambling about guitar quality and value for money and features and whatnot. At the end of the day, the important thing is that you get a guitar that you like, it inspires you, it feels good to play, and it makes you want to be creative and to make music. At the end of the day, though, you can only get what you can afford. So understanding what features are on a guitar and where you can make compromises hopefully will help you to spend your money a bit smarter and get something that works better for you. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please click like down there. If you really enjoyed it and you want to see other videos that are posted on the channel, then please click subscribe, which is also down there somewhere, and click the, the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos onto the channel. You're welcome to leave a comment, but I don't always see comments left on videos. So if you've got a specific question you want to ask me, whether it's about guitars, guitar playing, uh, music theory, anything at all, you're better off going here, fill that form in, send your question in. That way I'm guaranteed to see it and I can get around to answering your question in a future video. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.